Trying to beat us to the uh, hall. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Got? got a humdinger. Well, he did say that on the radio, right? That's yeah, where I, I ever used to say it all the time. Oh, really? When you get there, it's a humdinger. Mm -hmm. Yep. This one. Duck no drive. Peter. Remember, no me and the kid responded to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's only me and the oh, kid. Harold, me and the kid. And the kid hurt his back. You know what you got to do? Me and the kid. Jay Ramage. I'll look. The Wayside Fire, wasn't that the same week as me guys? Or that was a big one. That was freezing cold. The photo bug. Oh, photo bug. That was the first one. Right. Then Wayside. A couple yeah. nights later, the next couple night. Couple nights later, and then a couple right. nights after that was Allen Houston. Right. Oh, three bad ones. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Ask Peter about Wayside Girls. I was there. That was a person. He still laughs about that. The whole thing was fully involved. Marshall Fessions, I guess. It's a real decision. That was an A. It's a real call. It's a real call. It's a real call. That's a real one, guys. They'll get all dusty if you get out Well at all. Hey, 
Bounced off the door three, four times. Doc, you should have been in back in those days. Or home days. All the fire companies here and on and trying to soup up the pumps to capsize everybody. <laughs> Yeah, 
That is negative. We have not heard back from the doctor. Negative. We got the request for smart from Choir and from 952 on location. The current is 802. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Y
You can't make the stuff up, Chief. That that was it. Let's go down. I was waiting for the Chief to get back. I'm like, where the hell's the water? Yeah, we could this is a Come and find out. We got out. That was what I Oh my god. That was a disaster. Everybody back, guys? Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> That was three from the construction of the demo. It was a while out of Hamlet Jr. You could pit pilot them. Yeah. Show me out there. So I think I'm going to go on. 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 They say the same thing. I'm going to show you. Come on. Come on. Hey, fellas. Yeah, it is. I just want to say a couple of things. You can. Monday night we had a whatever Shut up. Any of you guys here? Birthday. Why? Monday was also my birthday. And I'll tell you, the Benevolent Association, the Airtel Hose Company, really did, did something out of the ordinary. They turned out the lights, they brought a cake in for me, and they all sang happy to the I guess it was. It was tough, but I'll tell you, now, there's one thing about this organization. It's coming out of your health care. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it already put the first one in. Man. But I'll tell you, this is really a brotherhood. And as you guys stay in here, the longer you stay, the more you're going to realize that this is a fantastic place to be. I've been here. I've seen every one of you guys come in with fire company. Everyone that's living today has seen from in with fire company. And I'll tell you. It's It'll be for, you. Yeah. <laughs> for some of the guys who are getting older looking. <laughs> Hi, Raj. Hey. How are you, buddy? Sure. <laughs> okay. Just to double back, because like I said, we have so, uh, many sets of our records that we're kind of meshing into one for the next update of our book that we're doing here. Uh, we, we touched on some of the dates of significance. Um, I'm just trying to find the 80s, which are lost. <laughs> It's a perfect metaphor. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're in the 80s, photo-wise. Um, what, Paul, if you don't look like your father, Ain't it? 1977, after after 17 years as chief of the Eggers Hose Company, Bellinson ended his tenure, turned the reins over to Ira H. Dresky. 
making him the third first third generation chief in the family to serve as chief. Harry Beeling was Ira's grandfather and Otto was Ira's father. Uh, as the community continued to grow, additional equipment was updated and been added. Today we had uh, three 1,500 gallon per minute pumpers and one 100 foot aerial articulating arm. Uh, two re light rescue vehicles, this was in 1990, uh, or 2002 when we updated this. Over the years, the hose company has been the front runner in emergency medical services and is currently trained uh, at that time with five, uh, and f five automated external defibrillators. We have a dozen now, maybe, defibrillators. Every truck and the station and the volume of life have one. Uh, we probably paid for all of our defibrillators now on every truck what the first three used to cost back in the day. Um, we treat allergic reactions, asthma. Uh, this was the early 90s. In the early 2000s, we did this. 1995, um, we moved into a new state-of-the-art station. Actually, I, I missed the part of the 80s. If you guys missed the 80s, I brought the 80s with me a little bit today. So, uh, 1983, he didn't even see it. 1983, when my dad joined, this was kind of the logo of choice. This fit me a lot better back then. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, this was uh, yeah. the guy at the hockey game that wears He has no idea. <laughs> so, I didn't hear it in the 80s very oh, well. Oh, yeah. Where's your max attack It's like a hot front. 1995, we erected a new station at the current location. Um, President Board of Fire Commissioners, this was in 07, was Joe Waltrich, Bill Balanson, Ty Smith, Iris Tresky, and John Kwiatkowski, and Ray Braun. List of past commissioners and secretaries, we've had uh, Eugene Auchi, Charles Leadham, um, John Nelson, Joe Blackburn, George Simons, Otto Strusky. Um, we've had about 10 secretary and treasurers to the fire district. Um, we went over the history of the ladies of history, history of benevolent association, or the uh, exempt association. Um, 1997. Uh, we began to completely follow the, and Ira said, I told him we had this since then. Um, 1995, we moved into the new station. 1997, we began to completely follow fire department history and equipment tracking through a new computerized fire department database uh, system. This program made it possible for us to store data and service history on all of our equipment and personnel. 2003, the Eggerzo Host Company, with assistance of a grant from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, uh, were able for the first time to place and service 30 pieces of NFAPA compliant uh, SCBA. You guys see some of the SCBA we've had over the years here, from the Chemox to the steel cylinder. 2003 was the first time we were able to replace all of our air packs at one time. Um, biggest update in SCBA in 25 years. Uh, Eggers Hose Company gained much needed funding in, in 2003 to create a multimedia training facility, which is the room you're sitting in now. Uh, 150. We, uh, Jack Candy. Jack Candy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. Sorry. Straight his hair for the occasion. Time. <laughs> hey, everybody's in this room now. Yeah, yeah. yeah your button's yeah. stuck. It's Collie's. Where's Collie? He's in the yeah. room. Yeah. He's in the bar. Okay, everybody's kind of in the room as much as usual. Okay. <laughs> you won't go forward. Who's who's next to Bame on the wall? Are you serious? No, no, no. It's it. oh. Who's oh, next Collie. to Collie? Collie. 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 Is that Collie? That's Wally. 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 <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Okay. Yeah. laughs> that's first one. <laughs> Look at the ruffled tucks. <laughs> the ruffled shirts. <laughs> uh, just to finish up here, uh, we put in the training room. 2004, we also got federal funding uh, for computer-based training. Um, a lot of this stuff, guys, was before the internet was really around. Uh, members and officers were being able to present topics for regular training and drills driven from software. And that was that was our update we did we did a little bit of a history of the fire district in the book um, talks about the petition to establish the fire district we have actual minutes that are extracted as well good jimmy yeah, how far is this by the way
our formation, our innovations, benchmark events, <coughs> icons, legends, some of the people that we talked about, um, our future. Our future is only as powerful as you guys are, are going to bring it to the table. Um, we're obviously not having the members knock down our doors every day, and when we do, many times it gets very discouraging for the chief and myself because it's not fruitful. Um, because we got four applications probably in the last week and we probably won't get anything out of it. So it gets very frustrating because we're not really developing the new firefighter of the future um, as much as we'd like to. Um, our future calls, our, our volumes are going up sky high. Um, however, our memorable events are not as, as sky high as they used to be because fires are not as much as they used to. Uh, motor vehicle accidents, we're not cutting people out of cars because cars are safer. We're not uh, putting out fires as much as we were because of fire alarm systems and sprinkler systems um, and fire prevention. Um, but our business has changed. We're now going to overdoses. We're going to still going to the, the smells and bells calls. Um, we're still doing a lot of meat on the stove type of stuff. Um, Chief, if you got anything on that that also part of operationally, we have the best equipment that you can offer. Um, best training. I can tell you personally, and we're going to go around the horn with some personal stories. I've been training for the fire company uh, as proceeds of the fire company from both sides of the country and everywhere in between. Um, and it's been a huge advantage and a huge opportunity to learn. Um, so that's kind of where we are and where we're going in the future. But it's a lot of it's in your guys' hands to spread the word. I, I, years ago, when I joined, and, and Mike, you probably agree, when we joined, what was the big thing? Get off house committee. Get your friends to join. Get people to join. So if you guys know anybody that you can recommend, uh, send them over because we definitely could use a few good hands. Um, the future of the company. Uh, we got rid of beer a few years ago um, as having a, on the company side, and I, I think it was a really good thing because <laughs> I like canned beer. But uh, we uh, we just we bond in different ways now. Instead of having it at the station 24/7, we get to enjoy it with one another and, and really have a good time. But uh, we're responsible with how we do that, and it, it's a good thing. Um, on the company side, we have had events over the years that we don't necessarily have anymore, whether it's a Christmas party or whether it's an annual picnic, but we have other things. We had our Valentine's party. We had our tried and true events like food drive, and we have our events that sometimes aren't able to be supported, like Kids Day, because we just have so many things going on. How many of you guys in this room dedicate more than one night a week to the fire hall? Oh, Almost everybody in this room. So it's, it's really, I used, to always, I used to always say that first week of December was like fire hall week because we'd have our monthly meeting and we'd have drills and we'd have election that first December. And now many times it seems like every night is that, whether it's EMT, research, fire council, past chiefs, chiefs, or any other association that we have, 
uh, either to be a participant or to support it because we're a very active station. <coughs> Pretty busy, so uh, we're busy doing a lot of stuff. Just take some time out to know why we're here, uh, to respond, to know why we're here, to enjoy yourselves. We don't get a paycheck, uh, but you're, it's here for, what's it? We do, well, some of us do, I will someday. Uh, but uh, it's an investment <coughs> in you uh, to, to perform um, and in the future. So when we have family events, your family sacrificing every day for this place, so give them the opportunity to enjoy themselves. That's why we have those types of things. Um, we want to have fun, so. Yeah, um, just piggyback off what John said, you know, he talks about how busy we are and stuff. There's, um, you always notice the change in the fire department, usually when you hit that thousand call threshold and you go beyond that. It's just really busy after a thousand calls. You, you, there's more volume, there's more to, for lack of a better word, pick and choose from, but, um, you know, we do what we do with, with the amount of members that we have, and the majority of the time, if not all the time, the calls get covered in the right way, and, and trucks get out, and, and we service the community. But, um, you know, as, as he talked about with the history, too, it's really interesting when you think back of how many, how the years fly by, and, and the people that have come in and out of the doors, and some that are no longer with us and stuff. And, and, and um, I have a good memory of Billy when um, when I first joined. But there's, everybody talks about the firematic side of Bill and how he was such a good chief and everything. But there's the the, the more personal side of of um, how welcoming he would be to anybody that walked in and stuff. If you guys didn't know him, some of the newer guys that joined after he, he passed. You know, he would always um, welcome the new members and give them a little bit of advice and do those types of things that you hope that the older and more senior members do, you know, because we're all going to be in that, in that position, you know, at some point, you know, in our careers here. So, um, you know, and as far as the other events, too, like John said, too, you know, it's us keeping those things alive. If, 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 if the newer or younger generation or whoever they are doesn't keep those things alive, they're just going to die out. And, and, and that's just how it's going to be, but it's up to you guys to kind of keep those things alive and keep those traditions alive. And you know, some of the things died out for, for reasons because that's just the way it is with the era that we're in today. But um, you know, I think that uh, you know, if we keep on the right path and, 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 and kind of learn a little bit about our history, you know, of why maybe we do things or why we don't do things or whatever, you know, it, it's. It's a mix of everything. Um, I, I probably said it to you know Pat Galvin and people here before. Pride yourself on sitting sitting at a different table. Go to a different table. Don't just sit with the people you normally sit with. You know, it, it, try to go to a different table and see you because know, it's kind of interesting. If you can sit down at any table in this building and talk to anybody at that table, you're doing pretty good. That means you know you're just not in that little clicky group or whatever. You can kind of talk to anybody, and that's important because you get to know other people in the building. And you get to, to know where they came from and stuff like that. Sometimes you find some interesting information about people, you know. Ask the guy next to you, hey, what's with him over there? What's he like? What's he what what was he you thirty years ago? You know, like we're doing here. You know, some of you guys probably never knew Gordy was actually a fireman years ago and did things and climbed ladders and did all the things that we're doing today. Or or, or Paul Mikulski ran the kids' party years ago or or whatever, you know, it's just those types of things, you know. So some people you learn that you've always known. That guy's a shitbag. He's a shitbag today. I mean, it happens. It happens. So, some people don't change. But, you know, at the end, but that's how you learn your history. That's how you know who people are and how they are. And, you know. So we won't mention any names. But. They're not here. They don't come to these things. They're not here. They don't come to these things. They don't come to these things. But... You know, at the end of the day, oh, that's no, why sometimes like that. when you say, hey, you know, that guy, that guy had 30, 40, 50 years in and he passed away and there's a good turnout for him and that's what we're supposed to do. It's because people got to know him and they got to know who he was and, you know, it, it, that doesn't happen by accident. So, you know, it's, our mission is to protect the community and do what we do, but it's more than that. You know, I, I've been, I've told many people too, you know, all of my best friends are in this building and if not all. So, best thing I, I ever did in my life, you know, and, and a lot of people probably say the same thing in here. If you watch, a lot of these people here, they're in each other's weddings, they go on vacations together, they, you know, that's the bond that forms over time. So. We didn't think he'd last towed. He pulled in the parking lot when he filled out his application <laughs> with this F-750 pickup with truck. With a blue light on top. Blue brown with a blue yeah. light on top from Ellicott <laughs> Creek. 
with an I fight what you fear bug thing on the front of the truck. <laughs> Pat goes, look at this swing it out. He ain't gonna last. Yeah. It's a true story. It is a true story. <laughs> Great friend of mine though. Uh, yeah. All right. Go around the table, start with mic number one, then we'll go to mic number two. Uh, you want a little story? I got... Uh, Since you brought up Gordy. Sure. When I first tried the fire hall, I lived at Maine and Anchor. Gordy lived up on uh, Argyle. 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 And Gordy had a Corvette. And there was a siren up there by the school. And if Gordy could get out on the first set of tones, by the time he got to the Eggert Road, the siren would be going off. And everybody would clear out of the way thinking there's a fire truck coming or something. Well, I had a building and I had a back out on the Eggert Road. And if I didn't look, that Corvette was coming down the street. <laughs> Remember, Gordon? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then i <laughs> We'd back it out, go do a call, and then we'd get the main and Eggert and Gordy just put it in a four-wheel drift and go. <laughs> First time I did that, we spoke about Norman Mauer. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm, by guys, I one time on Eggert Road. Like he was standing I still. I going to swallow that pipe. <laughs> Never do. <laughs> uh, favorite memory, Mike? Oh, there's so many. There's so many, really. Ira, drill or the sleeping duty. When we used to fire the truck up, and the guys that would go to bed early, <laughs> Ira would get on the where, pump. Where did, where did Jay go? I know. We used to hose, go in at out. night. We'd meet. And we'd fire the truck up and go upstairs with the booster line and just hose the shit out of the guys. <laughs> Jay, went out, Jay went out the window and down the downspout. <laughs> Most memorable call, Mike? I have a few of them. They're okay. We'll pass them. They're not good ones. Okay. But they're very memorable, you know, in my mind. Least favorite memory?